Hello and welcome to the fifth and final uh, video series, maybe final, maybe I'll add on to this as you guys uh, ask questions or have suggestions, but uh, as a bonus video I just wanted to kind of show my back end, how I, <laughs> I'll show you my back end, I want to show how uh, I handle the information that's being posted to my parser file. Um, and so I'm using PHP, I'm not using a framework, I created my own database wrapper in the last video series I did. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, I will post the database wrapper playlist in the description of this video. Um, check that out and you can use that database wrapper too, but I'm going to show you how I handle the parser file in this video. So by default, what happens is, with this plugin is if I change something, it fires off an AJAX call. The AJAX call is just goes to an endpoint on, on my application, and by default, it only passes these three values, or these three um, posted values. It's just ID, field, and value. So I need to know what to do on the back end to update my database with that. And a lot of you guys, hey, hey, I get it. If you've been programming for a while, you don't need this video. This is mainly for beginners. It's just a look at and all what I'm doing so and I'm not going to get too in depth with this but I'm going to show you bare bones how to update the database so let's get going here's my parser file I have nothing in it I'm going to go ahead and open my PHP um, PHP tags and then I'm going to require in my database wrapper that we built which we didn't build it now but in my last three that did um, so let's just uh, go ahead and require that require once. okay and then uh, I'm going to set db equal to db. This is a, if any of you are wondering, this is a singleton pattern. And now I have my db instantiated and returned to me. And so what I want to do is uh, let's talk about uh, security really quick. First of all, I'm using PDO. And all of my user input, which is coming from the AJAX, is going to be uh, bound. And so that takes care of SQL injection. injection. Um, I'm also going to create a really quick and dirty function right here on this uh, just to use. I, I'll call it a sanitized function to get rid of any sort of um, HTML tags or anything like that that could be passed in. Uh, and then also, uh, you also want to make sure you're doing something for uh, cross-site request forgery and um, you want to do something for man in the middle tax or uh, uh, CSS. Okay, so, uh, not CSS. <laughs> so, um, just take care of cross-site request forgery and cross-site scripting. So, here we go. First, uh, this the only reason I'm doing this is just so we can use it, but uh, you'll want to do more than this as far as security, probably if you're doing any sort of AJAX call. But what I'm going to do is just return HTML entities and uh, pass dirty, and then I'm going to go to end quotes. Okay, and we'll restrict that to UTF. Okay. All right, so that's our quick sanitize function that we can use. No problem there. Um, so now I want to know if there are posted values. So if post, uh, we're going to do some stuff. <laughs> if not, um, down here, what I want to do is I'm just going to. You know what? I think this would be a cool idea. Let's go ahead and create a response array up here. And right off the bat, I'm just going to give it a success and set that equal to false. All right. So down here, what I want to do is echo uh, echo JSON and code response and then I'll just go ahead and kill the page. Now we have nothing's posted to this, it'll kill the page and it's going to send response equals false back as a, a JSON string. 
Okay, so what happens? Uh, I want to make sure that, you know, first of all, if you're using a plugin, there should be, um, these things should be passed, but if someone's trying to do something tricky, you know, I'm going to check that at least has an ID and a field set. Okay. And then in order to do that, I'm going to uh, just do a for each loop. So for each required as field. All right, and if not is set uh, dollar underscore post. Field, um, then what I want to do if that's not set is echo JSON encode response, which will be false and kill the page. All right, else uh, outside of that. Um, so basically, it's going to make sure that ID and field are both set. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set down here. We'll do table. And what I generally do in this is I'll set up a separate parser file for each table, but I only have one table in this pro project, so contacts. So I know I'm, anything that I send to this parser file is going to update the contacts table. Um, and then ID is going to, we're going to go ahead and sanitize. Because this is user input or could be user input, uh, or it is, but uh, ID, that's what's being posted here. And to look at that, remember we have uh, in the network tab, I can see ID is posted right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy that down two more times, and we're gonna say field. And uh, value. So that are is the three. Uh, that's the three posted values that's coming back that's important to me. The and their variables ID, field, and value. This is going to update uh, the contacts table with those values. Okay. So since I have my database wrapper that I built uh, in the last series check that out if you're interested uh, let's see we can say if db and we can pass update so if that's let's just go ahead and set that success equal to true so what's the update uh, method take takes the table, so we know that already. Table, which is going to be contacts, and then it needs the ID, so we got that, and then it needs the field, um, and so that gets an array. That's just the way this works, but it's field, and then value. Um, so we can do it this way. Uh, we could write, you know, with this update function, it's actually being sent with PDO and it's being bound. Uh, that's how this is working. But that, that's it. I mean, that's going to, um, that's going to set the response to false starting out. And the only way it ever gets set to true is if this update is successful. And it's passing the table, the ID, and the field, and the value all to that. And so now if I change something, let me refresh here. Uh, if I change this to Benjamin, look at the network tab. It posts those values like it should. And then I get back success true from that. And then I can um, refresh here and Benjamin has been updated in the database. So let's fool it now, and let's um, remove the ID. Okay, so ID has been removed from Benjamin, and if I 
change that now and we go and look at the network tab oops what did I do Let's see headers uh, still past it let's see if I can see if I can remove that permanently here data input oh let's see maybe move that to now if I click on this it says oops something went wrong and it's because let's take a look at the network I didn't have an ID passed there. And if I preview, success came back as false. So um, if they try to get tricky and remove elements or whatever. Now that I'd like to point out that we just removed that, but I could change it to a different ID. So um, you know, people can do whatever they want, you know, security wise with this. So it's important that you guys um, are checking for this in your parser file. And uh, crap. inspect. Uh, let's see. Inspect this one. So I'm gonna change this to 14, and just update the wrong contact. So let's do that. If I change this to Chuck's, and we go and refresh the database. Uh, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Yeah, so when I fire it again, it changed the name of Tony to Chuck uh, because I set that ID. So you guys need to make sure that, you know, whatever's happening on the back end is safe um, and you don't want to mess anything up as far as that goes. Um, so let me refresh here. I'm going to change this back to Tony. Everything should be back in working order. But if you're you know, doing a reasonable amount of security, you know, this should be totally fine, especially because most of the time this is going to be behind some sort of, um, you know, some sort of login. I wouldn't put this on like a public page, obviously. But instead of having to open up a separate form and doing this anyway, you know, it's just a better user experience, in my opinion, you know, to just be able to go through here and quickly, you know, change this stuff and have all of this kind of and then it actually stays the same. So, anyway, I hope that's useful. Um, the parser file is super simple, but uh, it doesn't take much. I mean, we're simply updating a table with an ID, a field, and a value. I mean, however you get to that point, um, any security you can add to that, great. Um, but anyways, I hope that helps, and have a wonderful day.